Hey guys, let's talk rack mount, power distribution, and filtering. I've got a number of these units, uh, some from Furman, some from Art. They all seem to work pretty well for me. So I thought I would go over these units, give you my opinion on them, tell you some of the convenience features that I really appreciate. But before that, let me tell you a fun little story about power distribution. I was working at a bar restaurant venue and we would have bands come in on Friday and Saturday nights and there were certain bands that we liked a lot. They were good bands, they had a consistent draw, they were easy to work with and they cleaned up after themselves and didn't leave a mess behind on stage. And so those bands we would invite back every month or two and they were some of our regular bands at the venue. One of those bands was led by a guy who uh, reminded me of Jerry Garcia. He might have been Jerry's brother. He looked like him, acted sort of like him. He was a good guitar player. And he had a Marshall setup, which was a 4x12 box and a Marshall head on it. And I'm up on stage getting the band set up for the show, and he's up there, and I look over at his amplifier and notice that he has this enormous power cord coming out of the Marshall head. This is a power cord that belongs on some kind of big industrial piece of equipment. It's like eight or 10 gauge cable. So I uh, see that and I just mentioned to him going, wow, I got quite a power cable on that thing. He comes over and he's like, yep. Hey, let me tell you something. A lot, a lot of guys don't know this. But if you want to have a good performance with your amp, well, obviously you got to know how to play. But consider this. All that tone that your amp is producing, all the power that it's delivering to the audience, your whole instrument, where is it coming from? Well, it's coming from the wall socket, isn't it? And so it's really important that the amp has ample, clean unrestricted power so it can do its best. Bigger cable coming in means better tone going out. <clears throat> um, yeah, okay. Uh, now, I, I know it's not going to get me anywhere to criticize somebody's religion, so... All I could say to that was, um, well, your amp sure does sound good. Okay. And as I head back, I uh, start doing a little bit of math, going, let's see, it's a 100-watt Marshall amp, and the efficiency is probably about 70%. So if it was fully dimed out, it's probably going to draw less than a couple hundred watts. And he's not running at anywhere near that power level anyway. So, uh, yeah, that's not going to draw a whole lot of power. And I think that that power cable is more than sufficient. <laughs> so is having a massive power cable going to improve his tone any? Yeah, I don't think so. And on those lines, is having a rack mount filter box going to improve your tone any? Is this going to sound any better than this? No, I don't think so. It's not going to give you any creamier guitar tone. It's not going to reduce the hum and noise of your amplifier. Nothing like that. So if this and this are functionally equivalent, and this costs a couple hundred dollars, and this costs, well, just a few, is this a ridiculous purchase? I mean, really? Am I a fool to having bought these things? Because I've got a bunch of them. i got them in most of my racks. I don't think so. I think it was a good purchase. I I like them a lot. And to me, it's worth the money. Well, 
Maybe not. I tend to pick these things up used for a fraction of the new price, and at that price point, it's worth the money to me. Uh, of course, you've got to determine what your values are. So why do I have these in my rack if I could just use these instead? Don't I think the filtering is important and necessary? Hmm. Let's talk about that. Now, of course, this is just an example of a particular Furman unit I have. I've got other ones with some slightly different features. But um, obviously, the main reason I have one of these is because they provide eight outlets in the back. So I can plug all the rack equipment into it and then just have one power gourd going out to power everything up. Much more convenient. And it allows me to tie up all those cords in the back of the rack to keep my cable management semi-rational. So that's a big plus. Uh, the other big plus is that this thing's in your rack. Looks cool. Looks nice. Uh, you got to pick one that you think looks nice, but I think this one looks real nice. And so I know that when I come in and I pop that rack open and people see this in my rack, they know that they're dealing with a professional. Who am I kidding? Nobody cares about your equipment. Uh, they care about the results you can deliver, but nobody ever cares about your equipment. Uh, I know guitar players who bring out $2,000 guitars, and there might be two people in the audience who recognize that, and the rest of them would probably have been equally happy if you were playing on a first act, as long as it stays in tune. I would bring out these beautiful... $2,000 a cabinet passive speakers and think, <clears throat> my goodness, these are fantastic. And nobody would notice or care. I would have guys coming up to me going, eh, cool speakers, don't recognize those. Yeah, I tell you, my buddy, he's got some really rocking speakers. He's got some JBL JRXs and uh, boy, do they, they, they crank, man. Yeah, um, so nobody cares about your gear. But I think it looks nice. <clears throat> and I also think it offers some convenience features that I appreciate. Uh, such as on this unit, it includes some metering. It's got voltmeter and current meter. And those things aren't really critical, but I find them to be sort of convenient. And it's pretty rack candy. So hey. The voltmeter is actually kind of useful sometimes. At most venues, you're dealing with a pretty good power supply, and so it's no big issue. But I have done shows where I've had the band powered up on a generator, or maybe a circumstance where I'm on the pretty far end of a long extension cord. And in either of those situations, you can have some voltage fluctuations that will cause you trouble. And so if I see that the equipment is, hmm, not seeming to deliver the power I want or acting a little squirrely. And I glance down at this and see, hmm, yeah, we're at 105 volts. Maybe that's a clue. Or if I see the voltage dipping far down, that might be uh, an inspiration for me to turn things down a little bit. Maybe turn off a couple of power lamps or knock the volume down by a few dB and release some of that load on the mains power so I can get the voltage to come back up into proper range. So the voltmeter is uh, kind of handy for that. It also gives you peace of mind that you're plugged into an active circuit that seems rational. This one also has a current meter on it, an amp meter. <clears throat> and that's only really useful in racks that have equipment that draw a whole lot of power. And this one came out of a rack that had a bunch of power amps in it. And those power amps could potentially draw more current than the circuit could deliver if things were really dimed out. And so if the show is rocking pretty hard and I glance at this meter and see that the amperage draw is approaching what the circuit limitation is, well, maybe that will inspire me to turn things down just a little bit. But if this is in a rack full of effects that don't draw too much current, well, the amp meter probably isn't going to be 
telling me anything that's critical for me to know. But I like the meters. Meters are cool. Another feature this unit has that I think is a really nice feature, and it's been very convenient for me at many shows, is having an outlet on the front of the box so you can plug in something if you need to. Maybe it's just simply an opportunity to charge your cell phone or to check something out, but having a plug in the front of the box, that's uh, been handy more times than not. The other thing that you often find in these units, which this one does not have, are some lights. You can pull out the lights and uh, light up and illuminate the gear down beneath this. And so if you're working in a dark venue and you have effects or other gear that you need to adjust, uh, having a little bit of light on the subject can be cool. And some of those devices that offer lights in the front will also give you a connector on the back where you can attach a gooseneck lamp and light up the inside of your rack. So if you need to go chase down some connection back there, you might not have to break out the flashlight. And so those are some of the features that I find to be really convenient on these units. Uh, some of the units also include USB power connectors in the front so you can charge your phone up directly without having to use your little power adapter for the phone. Maybe that's handy. And so, because I think it looks cool, it helps me maintain my cable management inside the rack. Uh, and I like some of the convenience features. I like these devices. And if I can find one at an attractive price that gives me the features I'm looking for, I might go for it. And so because of that, I've got one of these in almost all of my racks. But in terms of pure functionality, I could just use one of these for just a few dollars. Be a much better deal. And if I was concerned about dirty power coming in and I wanted some power line filtering, well, then I could, for just a few dollars more, purchase a power strip like this one that has power line filtering built into it. Because the power line filtering in this is pretty similar to the power line filtering in this. And this is a fraction of the price. So let's talk about how important that filtering is inside this device. Now, like I mentioned, it's not gonna change your tone. It's not gonna make your amps work any better. But I'm also not saying that it's useless and worthless. It's, I'm sure it works. I'm sure it does work. But I'm not sure how important it truly is. Here's what we got. If we were to open this device up, what it has inside for filtering, probably. I'm talking in general terms. The, some of these model of devices are a little bit different than others, of course. And some have more protection and less protection. But... Speaking in general terms, if you were to open up one of these devices, what you'd find inside of it are some MOVs, metal oxide varistors, and those are over some of the power feeds in here. And an MOV is a semiconductor device that looks kind of like a quarter with a couple of leads coming out of it, um, like a ceramic capacitor little thing, inexpensive part. And those MOVs are designed to do nothing at normal voltages. But when the voltage rises up to a real high level, like a few hundred volts, a thousand volts, the MOV kicks on and shorts out that high voltage spike. And so if you have these little teeny tiny super brief clicks of high voltage spikes that come down on the power line, the MOVs will jump into action and dampen those things out. Now, every time the MOV does that, it takes a hit. And it takes a little bit of internal damage. And so they don't last forever, but generally they provide years of high voltage spike protection. And they can protect you from those extremely brief little high voltage clicks and transients. They're not going to protect you against major voltage fluctuations in the line with lots of power. But you'll find those MOVs inside of the rack mount devices and you'll also find them inside of 
the better power strips like this that say they offer protection. And that's the primary tool that these devices use to provide high voltage spike protection against equipment. Now the thing you will find inside of a rack mount power filter like this that you probably will not find in an outlet strip is a radio frequency choke. And so if you were to open that box up, you'd see a little metal box inside of it that is a RF attenuator. So if radio frequency energy gets onto your power line, that choke will absorb it and not pass it onto your equipment. So it filters out some of the RF. And those are the basic protection elements that you'll find inside of these units. Now, some brands have a little bit of extra protection circuitry for this or that. For example, the Furman advertises that some of their models have over voltage protection. So if the line voltage should rise up way beyond spec to say like 140 volts, the unit will detect that and it will disconnect all of your equipment and prevent that high voltage from going out into your equipment. And that seems like a good idea. Although in my many years of doing this, I can't think of an incident where the voltage coming off the socket was significantly higher than what it should have been. I'm sure that could happen, but it's pretty rare. But what about more disastrous situations like the building getting struck by lightning? Is this going to save your gear? Might. I wouldn't bet on it. Consider that if a bolt of lightning has enough energy to uh, throw that lightning bolt a mile from the sky, come down and hit the barn, and there's enough energy to start the barn on fire, that's a lot of energy. And my speculation, my expectation would be that if this box got hit by lightning, it would destroy this box. And would this then stop that current from going on to the next piece of equipment that's attached? Maybe, but I doubt it. I would bet that it would probably completely destroy this box and everything that's attached to it. If that lightning can jump a mile in the sky, it can probably jump over any half inch gap that gets created in here as this thing starts on fire. So if you get a serious wall up to the power line, I wouldn't expect one of these guys to save you. And so now why am I so dismissive of the filtering that devices like this offer? Uh, do I think it works? Yeah, I think it works, but I think it's not so necessary. Uh, consider this. <clears throat> Imagine in your home, you have an under the sink water filter system, a really good advanced one, one that's uh, super high tech that never needs to be cleaned. You don't have to worry about clogging cartridges. It's like self cleaning and it's super efficient, like reverse osmosis. So you could pour swamp water into it and then the output, it comes out totally pure and clean and pristine. Imagine if you had a filter like that on your sink, okay? And if you did, would there be a point in putting kind of a, a coarse filter in front of it? I mean, you could do that. Is it going to make the output any better? Probably not, because the filter that's under your sink is already so good. No matter what you put into it, it comes out pure and clean. So why would you need to add more filtering in front of it? It'd be kind of pointless. I mean, I guess it wouldn't hurt anything, but be kind of pointless because the main filter is so good. And that's the situation I see with these rack mount power filters. Because inside of your equipment, inside of your amplifier, there's a pretty good chance that the first thing that it goes through when the power line comes in are some MOVs, just like that unit has. And maybe some radio frequency filters, just like that unit has. And then beyond that, Inside of your piece of equipment, your amplifier, your uh, uh, audio equipment, the mixer and effects and so forth, those supplies have even additional filtering that converts that AC input to DC power to provide the power for the electronics inside the device. 
and it does extensive filtering so that DC power is clean and clear and completely pristine and voltage regulated and it really cleans things up well. So you've already got extensive sophisticated filtering inside of your equipment that does everything that it needs to do. So putting another filter in front of it, it's not going to make things perform any better at all. And so that's my treatise on these rack mount power distribution boxes. I think they're cool. I think they offer some nice convenience features. I think it's a lot of money for a glorified power strip. But if you can get them for a good price or a price that makes the value seem worthwhile to you, well, good deal. And I, I like the look, I like the convenience, so I use them. But I don't have any illusions that they're going to make my system perform better or do anything significant to uh, make my show a little easier. Now, are there devices like this that actually do have a real impact on the performance of the equipment? Yeah, there are, but they're not power distribution boxes. I can think of a couple of products that might actually truly be useful for power management in your rack. One of them would be a power sequencer box. Now, a power sequencer is going to look probably a whole lot like this with uh, eight outlets or thereabouts on the back side and a master power switch on the front and maybe some indicators and such. And the power sequencer is set up so that when you turn on the uh, master power switch on the unit, it doesn't just simply turn on all of the outlets in the back, it turns them on in sequence. So the first one goes on, it waits a second or so, then it turns the second one on, then it waits a second or so and turns the third one on, and so forth. And so it just turns these things on in sequence, boom, 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 boom down to socket number eight, or however many it offers. And then when you go to turn the unit off from the main front panel switch, it does the sequence in reverse. So the last one that it turned on is the first one that it turns off. Waits a moment, then it turns off the next one. Waits a moment, turns off the next one, and so forth. So it turns on in one sequence and turns off in the reverse sequence. Perhaps you've heard the expression, amps on last, amps off first. When you've got a collection of audio gear, it's a good idea to turn the power amp on after everything else has been turned on and is up and running and stabilized. Because if the amp is turned on and then you turn on other equipment ahead of it, the equipment ahead of it could possibly put out clicks or pops or bangs as it comes up. And we don't want those spurious signals to go down to the amplifier, which is turned on, and have it amplify that stuff and blast it out the speakers. Could damage the speakers, could just be annoying. And same thing when we turn equipment off. It's a good idea to turn off the power amp so that it can't pass any signals through it as we turn off all the other equipment ahead of it. So if that equipment ahead of it does put out any clicks or bangs or pops, it can't pass through the power amp and go out to the speakers. So by using a power sequencer, you could have all of the equipment in your rack switched on and then just turn it on by using the uh, sequencer box and it turns everything on in the proper sequence so you don't get bangs and pops coming through the system when you turn it on or off. And I could see that as being useful, especially in maybe a bar or restaurant situation where you have staff who are turning on and off the audio system. And you don't want to have them have to remember the proper sequence in order to run the equipment. You can just give them the instructions. Hey, when you want the system on, there's a switch. When you want it off, there's a switch. Very simple for them and safe for the gear. The other kind of piece of equipment that I would consider to be actually truly useful would be a voltage regulator. Now, those tend to be a little bit larger boxes than these typically. And like these, they have one power line coming in and a bunch of outlets in the back side. But instead of just simply supplying power to all of those outlets, they provide isolation. They, they run the power through a big internal transformer that has the effect of doing some serious filtering 
and isolation from the equipment on stage to the power feed itself. And those transformers have multiple taps on them so they can raise or lower the output voltage a little bit. And then there's some circuitry in the box that measures what the incoming voltage is. And if the voltage is a little low, it automatically clicks you up a couple taps on the transformer to bump the output voltage to proper range. Or likewise, if the input voltage is riding kind of high, it can adjust which tap on the transformer it's running on to lower the output voltage to your equipment to keep you in the proper range. Those sorts of devices I find to be really useful at places where I've got unstable power. Uh, for example, if I'm running off of a generator, and the generator might have some voltage regulation issues depending upon what the load is doing at the moment, uh, the voltage regulator in my rack I know keeps my equipment safe from transients and keeps the voltage in the proper range. Likewise, if I'm doing an outdoor show and I'm on the end of 200 feet of extension cord and the voltage is sagging because of that, the voltage regulator can take care of that condition and provide my equipment with clean, constant, proper voltage. Now, of course, in that kind of situation, there are limitations. The voltage might be sagging on that long extension cord because of the amount of current draw going through it, and you're just starting to hit the limits. And if the voltage regulator sees that sagging voltage, it's going to gear down and try to bump up the output voltage to proper spec. But you don't get something for nothing. You can't just change the voltage without changing the current. And so if it's going to bump up the output voltage, it's going to also raise the input current to make up for that. And if the voltage is sagging because you're already drawing too much current, well, you get yourself into a little catch-22. So I'm saying that a voltage regulator device can't make power out of nothing. It can only transform the power that's coming in. So if you've got weak power coming in, just that just isn't enough to power all your gear. Well, the voltage regulator box isn't going to magically fix that situation. But it will make sure that the output voltage is within reason for safe operation of your equipment, provided that you can supply it with enough power to actually run everything. And I found those units to be useful in some situations where I've had concerns about the quality of power. And they're going to cost you more than a rack mount power distribution box like this. But I think it's a good thing to have if you're in those sorts of situations. So those are the two devices, the sequencers and the automatic voltage regulators that I think really do have an impact for protecting your gear. These devices are just fancy power strips. But at the right price and with the right convenience features, for me, I think it's worth it. So, uh, I hope that uh, helps clear up any confusion anybody might have had about how fantastic these Furman or Art or similar rack mount power strips are. And if you choose to get one, I hope you find one with all the features that make your life a little easier. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoy the channel. If you would choose to subscribe or give a thumbs up, I appreciate that. And I hope to catch you again soon on another upcoming episode.